uh, tell me a little bit about Moraga Gardens. Moraga Gardens it wasn't always a community farm. It started as a family farm. And then friends began to join and uh, everything started to grow. <laughs> Welcome. We're going to walk around a little bit and see some of the uh, things we're growing and how we do it. And meet some people who are involved. There's a lot of diversity here. Everything that we're looking at here, uh, we're not selling. So uh, it's a bit of diesel. This is for all of our uh, members. Right in front of us is an uh, interesting plant. This is known as wild sesame. And it's a Korean delicacy. They take these leaves. Look at the bottom of these leaves. They're really fabulous. Isn't that something? Really beautiful colors. The flavor of these leaves is kind of like a real rich, nutty sesame flavor. So it's used in salads. You can take a big leaf this and you steam it and you put rice in there and then you roll it up like a domas so this is a real nice Korean delicacy the benefits of having a diverse <coughs> membership is um, for example that you would never have known about this wild sesame if Rosie Kim one of our members uh, hadn't brought this in from Korea. So there's, I think we have three Korean families and they love this, this uh, particular vegetable. Similarly, we have uh, several Indian families, an Egyptian lady, some uh, family from Malaysia. In fact, that was an interesting story. We were introducing this Malaysian couple to our farm. They said, what can we do? They said, well, we're weeding here. Why don't you pull up some of these weeds? And they said, well, where's the weeds? And they said, these. And they said, those aren't weeds. We grow those in Malaysia. That's a, that's a really delicate vegetable. So we suddenly learned that what we thought was a weed is a, 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 a cultivated vegetable in, in other countries. So we learn a lot from our own membership. So here's some mazuna. It's a Japanese green. A very uh, wonderful, delicate green. It's uh, yeah, this beautiful spidery look. Very, very tender when steamed. The delicacy of Japanese cooking. Uh, it's a whole other bed of basil. These are collards right here. Two different kinds of collards. Two different kinds of chard down there. Silverado white stock chard and then a bright light multicolored stock chard. Our green beans here, our pole beans, are planted in three different uh, sessions, two weeks apart. So we'll have string beans on that first batch in maybe a week or two, and then followed by another uh, group, <coughs> third group. These are different kinds of kale in here. <coughs> Some uh, flat Italian parsley here, very really beautiful uh, parsley. Super rich and tasty. Uh, co mingling is some uh, bok choy. These are bok choy fruit. A good uh, Chinese delicacy. There's some dill. Great flavor. Great looking clusters of flowers. Look at these. You can see beyond, we have a, a sculpture right in the middle of the garden, and that round circle is, is all herbs. So one of our partner uh, members, Julie Duncan, is managing all of the herb cultivation around that sculpture. Come meet our our good friend Clayton. Hello. This is Myrto. Hey, Myrto. This is Eric. This is Eric. Three of our Hi, members Clayton. who are, today they're, um, renovating our cilantro and arugula bed. Right now they're chopping up some manure. And add that manure to the bed and then we'll reseed. Mary, why don't you tell us a little bit about what, what else you do here? I volunteer here regularly. I'm here about every Saturday. And also I help with the watering uh, on a rotation. Uh, it's the watering crew that keeps all this alive in between the, the weekends when we work here. 
And uh, I also uh, work with another volunteer, or I did last spring, on uh, selling uh, plant starts to our friends and neighbors. They're able to support um, the gardens um, financially through the sale of these plant starts. These plant sales is what we didn't used to do, but people like Mary and Anita came along and said, hey, let's, let's really push these plant sales. Well, we can, uh, uh, it's easy, we can get a lot of people here. And so um, uh, with their leadership, they were able to create for us uh, how much, how much did we sell this year? Well, this year we sold uh, a little over 1,500 plants, and mm -hmm. next year we think with a little better organization we might sell about 2,500 plants. Yeah. It doesn't take a lot of time at the, in the spring, maybe three or four weekends? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and about, we did it in basically three weekends. It's like, Mary, why, why, uh, why do you volunteer? Like, what do you get out of it? Well, I get a lot of things out of it. Um, I, I love to work in the uh, soil and I don't really have an opportunity where I live. So this is actually, uh, I call it my therapy. I, um, I look forward to this as my favorite day of the week when I can come here and work. Plus it's fabulous food, I have to say. I don't, I think I eat better than most people I know. And uh, a lot of great people here. I've, I've met a lot of really fine, wonderful people. And so it's a combination of those three things, I think. All right, Eric's one of our Steady uh, volunteers. So, what's your passion, man? Why do you come here? Why do I come here? Uh, well, just look around. It's gorgeous. I just started getting into gardening a few years ago and found out about this farm. And uh, I was really impressed by the knowledge of everyone here, especially Deva, you know, just seems to manage it so well. And I just, it was a good opportunity for me to learn. Of course, then. All the produce that's grown, somebody's got to eat it. I'm good at that too. <laughs> it's an example of sustainability too. You know, you can really grow a lot from the earth, and uh, you know, sell what you need to, and still have plenty left over um, to share with everyone. I, I really like that concept as well. Is your glass, honey? Right now we have 50 members and maybe six or eight on a waiting list. But the, um, the nature of these kinds of volunteer organizations, in my experience, is that uh, every year you, lo you lose maybe four or five people. So you need to uh, always be looking for new people. One of the ways that we're uh, we find that it works well to keep good people is to assign them, invite them to take on some responsibility for something specific like uh, plant sales, or managing the, uh, the greenhouses, or stepping up plants, or fertilizing something, or taking a certain bed of, of, the, of the garden and taking care of it. And so then, in that way, they get really involved in the other part of that is we build teams. So there isn't one person that's doing planting or seed, seeding or stepping up. There'll be a whole team. And then there'll be another team following them that does the watering. <laughs> Make a movie. <laughs> Baby diamond ring